My first guest tonight is an actress known for her iconic roles in Aliens, Ghostbusters, and Avatar. Please welcome back to the show the lovely and talented Sigourney Weaver. People, the people love their Sigourney Weaver out wow, there. Well, it's it's, it's lovely to see you again. Lovely to have you back. Yes, it's been so long. You uh, you were here uh, four or five months ago, I something like so. that. I think it was after uh, Trump had been elected yes, president of the United States, but before he had taken the oath of office. You were a little anxious at the time. Really? Have you? Yeah. <laughs> are you still anxious, or are you heavily medicated? And follow-up question: Did you bring enough for everyone? Yes. What how have you been dealing with it? Well, Ms. Weaver? Anxious and heavily medicated. Of okay, course. good, good, good. So how have you been dealing with it? What have you Well, been... actually I I was I finished a job and I went on vacation in Hawaii. Oh, that's and nice. uh, with wow. my husband and we had a kind of uh, health break from the news. We had a kind of MOT Mittout Trump respite, which actually has made me feel much better. Oh, yeah. uh, I know it's selfish. And yeah, I'm in yeah, denial, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can't still, leave I'm us grateful. here alone. <laughs> no getting a known here gets out, Sigourney Believe Weaver. Me, it catches where did, up where did very you quickly. go to get away? Uh, we went to Hawaii. You know that's still in the United States, right? You know he's still he's still president of there too. He may not know that. <laughs> I think uh, after uh, after they also barred his last ban, he may just. The get travel van. He might just saw him off That's and push right, him out to so. sea. <laughs> well, uh, how long were you off the grid there? Well, actually, like a month. That's oh, like the longest. That time. sounds lovely. It was incredible. I was almost afraid to come back. I'm not sure I could function, you know. Well, what, what, what period of time was this? Was like was the yeah, inauguration? I just got back. I came just... back for you. Oh wow! What an honor! What okay. an honor! <laughs> so what are you? Um, uh, what are you doing? Uh, Next, are you going to someplace else? Because I understand you just went to Cuba. I did just go to Cuba. I went to Cuba too. Wow! Yeah. Yes, it's fascinating down there. Amazing. What did you What did you make of it? I thought it was well. I was with mostly musicians because I went down with record ar archivists, archivists that I met at my local record store. I know there aren't many, but mm -hmm. and so you know, what really it was a glorious place and such amazing people. Can I ask you just, what did yes. you expect before you went there as opposed to what you saw? I, I, I certainly knew that there was, a, that they had a very fine educational system. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize what a classical educational system they had, especially for artists, all musicians and painters, and they're all given a very serious classical education. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, it's a, in an art school built on the golf course that they got rid of the golf course after the revolution and built this big womb-like, it's literally, you kind of walk into the vagina-like opening. <laughs> you go in, you go I in, you become an artist. <laughs> totally different tour. After, uh, after like 10 years, then you emerge full-grown as yeah. an artist. And you can go to any level of education you want, and they'll pay for it. I think so. And Havana is like 1955. I know. Did you get in one of those cars? Of course. I know. Absolutely. Ours stalled, and we had to get out and get, all give a push. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I think Jump you got a better in. tour than I did. That sounds like a lot of fun. Well, listen, I'll tell you where my record stores, and you can sign up for next year. <laughs> okay, that would be fun. Yeah. Now, um, have you started shooting the new avatars yet? Um, no. <laughs> I guess not. James Cameron is not out there with a pistol. You can tell me <laughs> there's no red dot appearing on your forehead um, right now. Have you started shooting the Avatar movie, no, Senator? Yes not. or no? I have not. You have not? I have when not. When do you start? And if I said that yesterday in an interview, I was wrong. Oh, because you said. <laughs> oh, I understand. No, I, we have not started. Okay. But you will start at some point. I'm sure we will start at some point. <laughs> and I'm looking forward sure. to it. And it's going to be fabulous. I know, of course yeah. it is. It's going to be incredible. <laughs> now, your new movie is called The Assignment, which took decades to make. And it's, and it's, a, it's a, a bit of an odd story. We have a clip here. Could you set up the clip? and somewhat explain what okay. this movie is about? All right, so it's a, a, um, it's a, 
a noir film. Okay. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a, Michelle Rodriguez plays a hitman named Frank who uh, just kills people. And uh, he's sort of the dregs of humanity. As and they are. He was an orphan and, you know, he never had an education. Don't make excuses. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he, uh, he kills uh, my character's brother, uh, uh, assassinates him. And so my character is a, a very fine surgeon who does gender replacement surgeries. Mm -hmm. And that is sort of her life and what she does. And she's so uh, kind of broken by what Frank does to her brother that she, she exacts revenge. She has him kidnapped and she turns him into a woman partially to see if that will change his character, but also um, uh, because she's quite unstrung herself. She's in an insane asylum and mm -hmm. it's a dark, it's a dark, <laughs> a dark, juicy, gorgeous uh, B movie and Michelle just rocks it. She is so awesome as Frank and uh, uh, whatever, <laughs> I can't okay. Francesca. Uh, no, well, I mean, we, we have a clip here where I think your character is explaining her motivation. Okay. I'm hugely sympathetic to those who want and choose to participate in gender reassignment. But normally that would never include Frank Kitchen. He was by all accounts the type of man who reveled in murderous activities as well as his masculinity. But as time went by, the more I thought about the situation, I changed my mind about the man. He was an abandoned child who'd become a ward of the state, condemned to live on the streets at an early age. I have the traditional romantic nostalgia for the idea that everyone should have a second chance. Not the second chance he was looking for. No, no, not what he, he imagined. But it's a, a Walter Hill movie who's one of our great directors, and I, I really encourage everyone to see it. Well, um, lovely to see you as usual. And I hope we can get together and have some mojitos next time. Oh, I would like that. I became very fond of them. Yeah, they serve them for breakfast over there. Indeed, they do. <laughs> well, the assignment is in select theaters and available on demand this Friday. Support Weaver, everybody. We'll be right back.